Good morning. Welcome to our November NHD subcommittee meeting. Thank you all for joining us here today. We will call the meeting to order and then begin with the review, review and approval of the October meeting minutes. I'll move approval. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Excellent. Passes unanimously. We have a consent agenda, including great information in the meeting packet um, on homeless initiatives and congratulations to our housing department for their designation as a high performer in Section 8. Very exciting good news, so I would encourage everyone to review the meeting packet for more information on that exciting recognition. And so with that, we will move to items 6 to 7, which are for consent, unless anyone would like a presentation. I, uh, I'll move approval, for, approval to uh, for items uh, 6 and 7. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And some exciting news there. Um, we're going to be applying for more members of AmeriCorps at the City Council. So we and District 8 have had the opportunity to benefit from that program, and I am excited that more of my colleagues may as well. A great tool for fighting poverty and a program that has been serving our country for several decades. And we had an event earlier this year where we recognized that milestone. So AmeriCorps continues to help us at the City of Phoenix, and great news for our volunteer service program. Um, item number eight is our state and federal agenda. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee. I'm Tom Remus with the Office of Government Relations. Joining me today is James Orlowski, who heads our federal program, and John Wayne Gonzalez, who heads our state program. Today we're before the subcommittee seeking your input on the community development portion of our state and federal agenda. Uh, at this time, we've received input from the city departments. We've met with most of the council members and council staff to receive some uh, input and direction. And today, we're before you to fine tune uh, our document and see if there's something that we've missed, if there are other ideas to put forward. So that way, when we come before the full council at the policy session on December 8th, we'll have our full package both for the state program and the federal program. With that, I'll start by talking about uh, our guiding principles in both the programs. As you've heard us talk about before, under the state side, we really look to make sure that the state isn't shifting any new responsibilities onto the city without any accompanying funds. We want to make sure that the mayor and council uh, protect their, we protect their ability to set policy here at the local level. We want to make sure that the state doesn't tap into the state shared revenues that come to the city of Phoenix that make up about 34% of our general fund budget here at the city. And additionally, a new item from last year was to protect our water resources. In the federal program, we have two items. Uh, the first one talks about making sure the city of Phoenix gets our fair share of federal dollars. Uh, as you've heard us speak to before, uh, East Coast cities, older cities, usually get a higher percentage of federal dollars coming to them, especially in the community development program. And lastly, we also look to protect our local authority and make sure that there's no unfunded mandates coming down to cities and town. Now, with me today, I do have James, who'll be talking about our federal program. Uh, we have John Wayne Gonzalez here as well, but I want to point out that city departments did not propose any new actions under the state portion of our agenda. We will, though, be watching very carefully as bills are introduced this legislative session. We will be watching the budgets that are put forward, and we'll make sure to bring back to you any items that do impact the city in any way. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to James Orlowski to talk about uh, what we're proposing for our federal agenda. Great. Thanks, Tom. And um, so uh, basically the way the presentation is laid out is grouped out by department and the proposals that we received for, as Tom mentioned, the community development section of our agenda. And um, I'm going to move through this pretty quickly. And um, certainly if there are any questions or items for follow-up, happy to discuss those. But out of um, concern for the committee's time, just want to get through those. Um, the first slide I have here is talking about fair share, and Tom alluded to this in his remarks, but that's an ongoing top concern of the city is when we talk about some of our community development programs and the funding that we get, we just want to make sure that Phoenix is getting a fair share. Historically, that hasn't been the case. 
um, typically a lot of some of the um, East Coast communities and colder cities, uh, cold weather uh, cities and states tend to get more funding than the city of Phoenix does. And so we just want to make sure as we go throughout the year that we're um, arguing and fighting for our fair share of federal funding. Two examples where that's the case are um, community development block grants or CDBG and also the low income home energy assistance program known as LIHEAP. So just wanted to point out those two examples where we're really focused on fighting for our fair share of federal funding. Moving into the um, housing portion, portion of our federal agenda, um, I have on this slide CNI, which is the Choice Neighborhoods Initiative, as well as a couple of other items. And really these programs are focused on sort of innovative approaches and programs that um, HUD and the federal government offers to try to um, expedite and streamline things at the federal government. And so these are programs that the city uh, has been taking a look at to see if we want to apply. I know uh, CNI in particular that we're waiting for the um, notice of funding availability to come out on that and we're monitoring that very closely um, at the federal level. So um, just wanted to point out that those are all programs that the city is currently exploring and I know CNI in particular is a top priority of the housing department. On this next slide, um, it's also housing priorities and um, I just, what I wanted to say about this slide in particular is that I think the housing department has really been feeling the pressure from the federal government when we talk about funding that comes to cities and public housing authorities to provide public and affordable housing. Um, and they've just really been feeling a lot of fiscal pressure as a result of federal budget pressures and so forth. And so um, when we talk about these items, we just want to make sure that those funding streams that come to the city to provide affordable housing um, is either preserved if not increased. And so just as an example, in the area of the Home Investment Partnership Program, uh, the city derives $3.8 million in funding there on an annual basis. And so we just want to look to preserve those funding streams. In the area of human services, on this slide we talk about the Community Services Block Grant as well as Head Start. Um, and CSBG really deals with leveraging um, city, state, and federal dollars to get sort of the most bang for our buck. Um, and we do get $1.3 million in CSBG funding each year. And that goes towards um, high impact strategies, things like earned income tax credit and some of those programs that really benefit um, low income populations in our city. As far as Head Start goes, that's really another example where we're kind of struggling to get our fair share compared to some of the other cities out there. Um, uh, they just get a, a, a higher share of funding. And as a result, we're not able to hi, uh, serve as high a share of our population as some of those other cities. And so we just want to make sure that we're maximizing our advocacy and fighting to get our fair share of those dollars when it comes to Head Start. Um, moving on to other human services topics, we do have homelessness covered in our agenda. The city gets about $1.3 million on an annual basis in funding that's called the Emergency Solutions Grant. Um, that really goes to providing emergency shelter, rapid rehousing, and other things that serve um, homeless populations in our city. Um, so again, want to preserve that funding stream. Um, and similarly, on the Family, Family Advocacy Center, we do talk about domestic violence funding. And we just want to um, basically maintain, for example, funding for the Violence Against Women Act, as well as the Violence of Crim, uh, Crime Act funding. Um, and particularly increased funding for anti-human trafficking efforts, which of course has been a, a focus of the city in recent years. In terms of economic development, we ca uh, call out a couple of topics in particular, one being innovation centers and entrepreneurship. Really what we wanted to talk about in that area is basically um, supporting entrepreneurship in the city, looking for federal and foundation funding opportunities to support things like, um, just as one example, the Resource Innovation Center. As I'm sure you're all well aware, that effort by the Public Works and Community and Economic Development Department um, want to look for federal funding to support those entrepreneurial efforts that the city's engaged in. In terms of Luke Air Force Base, um, obviously the base is an economic engine for the city as well as the entire West Valley and frankly the state. Um, they have the F-35 uh, fighter mission, of course, and so we want to pr uh, protect that mission as well as look for other opportunities to bring missions to Luke Air Force Base. Um, just as one example, currently um, the Air Force is looking at, uh, the, the National Guard actually is looking at um, putting another mission there involving cybersecurity missions. So we just want to look for those opportunities to expand uh, those endeavors. <clears throat> Finally, uh, just wrapping up economic development, we talk about New Markets Tax Credit, um, which is the mission of PCDIC here locally, um, as well as the workforce development. Um, and really, so in terms of PCDIC, it's talking about spurring economic development in distressed areas of the city, uh, so it's a federal tax credit. Um, as, and in terms of workforce development, we talk about um, 
you know, opportunities to get federal funding to advance workforce development in the city. Just as one example, in the last year, we got a $1.1 million youth build award from the federal government. And so we look for opportunities like that to be able to um, basically serve um, the community and look for ways to increase employment in that area. And finally, um, a couple of other topics that are also covered in our community development agenda. We do talk about My Brother's Keeper, um, obviously, uh, an effort that's uh, aimed at improving life outcomes for what they call opportunity youth, um, and particularly men of color, uh, to basically improve life outcomes for those populations. And of course, Councilman Gallego and Councilman Pastor are currently engaged in, in leading that effort here locally. And so we just want to make sure that we're supporting that endeavor and looking for federal funding opportunities as those come up to advance those efforts. Finally, we talk about the remote sales tax collection issues, specifically the Marketplace Fairness Act. Um, and basically we, what we're looking for here is to support legislation um, that would allow us to collect sales tax from remote sellers. Um, the city has agreements with some of those big retailers. However, uh, not everything is captured currently. This is an issue that has been talked about extensively at the federal level for probably the past five to 10 years. The legislation hasn't gone all the way through the process, but we want to continue to monitor that and provide feedback as the opportunity arises and support legislation that would help us get there. With that, um, that's a quick high level overview of our community development agenda and um, would love to get any feedback uh, that you may have on our community development agenda. Wonderful, thank you. I think Councilman Pastor and I are very excited about the My Brother's Keeper agenda. And I think we should make sure we also look outside of federal government at the My Brother's Keeper Alliance, which has a lot of the funding that is available for local communities that are engaged in My Brother's Keeper. So the president has really turned to the, the foundation community. And that's probably not one we traditionally monitor, but seems like a good opportunity for us. Right. Also, we had a great opportunity to meet with housing officials in Washington, D.C and tell them that we would like to reinvest in the city's own this housing stock that the city owns. And they stressed to me that they expect the state to be a funding partner in those initiatives as well, that they will, we will not get all the funding we need from the federal government. And since we have historically not used general fund funding, we'll need the state to be at the table as well. So um, with the support of my colleagues, I would ask that we add that to our state agenda. Thank you. I definitely would support that. And there, there are so many great topics here. The federal agenda, I think we're, we're, uh, we're on the right track, certainly. Uh, Head Start, obviously education is, uh, is something that we, could, we have to continue to, to work on right here in the city and for this, in the state for that matter. I think that's appropriate for us to, to go after our fair share of uh, Head Start funding. And, and I uh, also appreciate the efforts towards the innovation centers and entrepreneurship. You know, we continue to thrive right now in the city of Phoenix uh, in this ecosystem. We're, we're, we're creating together uh, the most welcoming uh, and generous environment for entrepreneurs and startup and tech and innovation and, uh, and, and looking for those uh, funds to help, uh, to help continue that, that uh, that movement, if you will. Uh, and, and that's something that obviously is not just controlled by the city of Phoenix or by government. It shouldn't be, frankly. We have the private sector, the higher education institutions, um, and, and, and so many others that are, that are just coming to the table. And I think they would all appreciate the fact that we are looking at uh, innovation centers and entrepreneurship uh, and, and adding something like that on our federal agenda, I think is a big deal for us. So thank you for doing that. So in, in line with My Brother's Keeper, it, I think it's, it's good in our part and looking at a global holistic way that we're also looking at the workforce development and being able to uh, uh, look at that funding and, and try to go after that funding in order to make those connections also with My Brother's Keeper. And in, in addition to that, obviously, the Family, family Advocacy Center is, is core to all of our, uh, is very important to us. but. Uh, with that, also the homelessness and, and, and coming with great efforts and in, in, in figuring out how we uh, end homelessness, uh, which goes in with permanent housing. And so it all, to me, is there's connectivity to all these pieces on how we 
solve a greater need within our community. So thank you for your efforts. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the subcommittee, just as a reminder, we still have plenty of time for input. We are going to be going to policy on December 8th. So if there's other ideas, please let us know. We'll continue to work with you and your offices to receive input. I would be uh, negligent if I didn't uh, say thank you to all the city departments and their staff who helped craft this agenda and put a lot of time and effort into lobbying for it as well. Uh, additionally, we have a great grants coordinator in the Office of Government Relations, Katya Hidalgo, who uh, helps us craft award-winning grants along with the city department staff. So thank you for your direction today. And I guess before we move on from this agenda item, I also wanted to bring up funding for programs like TANF. It is my sense that uh, we've been talking with some of the providers who serve our community and partner with this committee on areas like housing, that as we cut those benefits, we're really seeing increased strain on city services, that people are having a hard time making it through with the lowest levels in the country, and so urging the governor to stop passing that to local government would be something. Madam Chair, we'll add that to our state agenda. Wonderful. So, with, do, should we, is it for action? It is not for action, it's just for input at this time. Mm -hmm. so. Wonderful, thank you. Thank, All right, you much. thank you. Move on to item number nine, community development block grant housing counseling and neighborhood revitalization RFP. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the subcommittee. I'm Chris Hallett, the Director of the Neighborhood Services Department. I have with me Rachel Milney, who is our Compliance Manager, who oversees several of our Community Development Block Grant requests for proposal processes. We are here today to provide you information and request your recommendation for approval of our Housing Counseling and Neighborhood Revitalization Request for Proposal process. We have approximately $100,000 set aside for our Housing Counseling programs. The uh, applicants can prefer, submit for up to 45000 for each uh, proposer is a cap. Uh, the services they would be looking to provide and we seek to provide is our, uh, the first two bullet points would look to serve our low to moderate income home buyers, either for first time home buying or re-entry if they've uh, had some issues in the past with their credit, as well as current homeowners who might need uh, credit improvement uh, to re-enter and or those who have post-purchase counseling so they can maintain and sustain their their home throughout the, the period of its mortgage. Eligible applicants include nonprofit organizations that are HUD approved housing counseling agencies. Uh, those are the only ones who are allowed to be able to um, provide and submit for these. Additionally, we have approximately $300,000 set aside for neighborhood revitalization. Uh, this type of funds uh, provides low to moderate income homeowners with housing rehab, um, including major or minor rehab on owner occupied single family houses, as well as home accessibility modification uh, for those physically challenged homeowners. Again, these are low to moderate income homeowners, uh, the most in need for these types of services. Those include uh, those at at or below area, 80% uh, area median income. Again, eligible applicants uh, need to be nonprofit or faith-based. Uh, those who have a proven track record providing services to the low to moderate income residents of Phoenix. Uh, with your recommendation, we hope to get council approval and to be able to issue the RFP in December. Uh, proposals would be due and scored in January. We look to come back to the subcommittee in February for your approval and recommendation for council action in March. So if there are no other, if there are any questions, uh, we would look for your recommendation for council approval on this RFP process. Any questions? That would entertain a, entertain a motion for approval. No questions. I think it's straightforward, and uh, I support. So I will make motion to approve. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you. I think the vice mayor may have the record for the. Uh, Shortest agenda, but I'm trying to challenge him. <laughs> uh, future agenda items. Would any members of the subcommittee like to request any agenda items? 
I would like a, an update on Park Lee. Great. You know, uh, I was thinking about this, and I know that we all care very much about this topic, but uh, just the, the types of, you know, we, we've had some slumlord issues, obviously, in the city of Phoenix, mm -hmm. and uh, that that's something that we should never uh, uh, just become complacent on. And uh, maybe just an update on on those types of ordinances. That, you know, there have been some properties of Woodbridge Apartments. There, um, there are a couple of others that I, I think have moved in the right direction. But an update, and uh, it, that would be that would be good for us to have. Great idea. It'll be. I think our community prosecution bureau has been very busy as well, and we might want to get an update for them and recognize their hard work and some record-setting successes as well. Uh, with that, we'll move to item 11, call to public. Uh, first card is from Joanne Scott Woods. Okay. In there. Oh, my glasses. Okay. All right. Um, um, I was homeless uh, for a year, and it was in 2007 when programs for women's violence uh, that you mentioned uh, weren't, I didn't know about. Um, so I had to get in line with all the others to wait for housing, and that was a year. Uh, this past month, I was on the streets with the homeless. At 2 in the morning, it started raining, so four of us started looking for shelter. So we traveled to the county buildings where there was more sh shelter and definitely less Phoenix police officers to enforce the urban camping law. Around three, we were settling down. And after four, after finding a public restroom, we could really settle down. Around five, uh, a really kind Maricopa County police officer, I mean officer, uh, told us to move on. And being a really compliant person, I did. And I went, fortunately, I had my car and I could go to my real home because I was as an activist uh, at a sleep out for the homeless because of the f thousand that wait at CAS, only 400 are giving places to sleep currently. There is an increased amount of homeless vets and there are vouchers but they don't have housing attached to those vouchers. So the 70 out of, I don't know how many, Angel would know, are only being used because there's not any more housing to go with those vouchers. And that's why I'm here today. Thank you. Angel Garcia. Um, so I'm here today with an organization called Build Us Hope. I wear many, many hats, but that's the one I'm representing today. I will try and make this brief as I have to take a lot of information and kind of narrow it down for you guys. Um, so one of the problems we're seeing is those vouchers that were released a couple months ago are being released a lot slower than we'd like to see happen. And one of the biggest barriers I hear over and over again when I'm doing homeless advocacy is we've got the voucher, we're excited, we waited three, four, five months to get this voucher, we stood in line, we went through the programs for housing and employment and everything else, and I'm excited. And then I start going to these apartments and I run into a, a barrier. They tell me, well, we're part of this crime-free housing association. And it sounds wonderful. Well, we don't wanna take these criminals in because we wanna create this safe environment for the people that live here. Well, the problem we run into is a lot of homeless individuals have mental illness and a lot of mentally ill have a criminal background in history. So they got, they're excited, they got this voucher, they go in and now they find out that they can't find a place to go with it. So two months go by, three months go by, and then that voucher is no longer any good because they said, well, this voucher tends to last two to three months if you don't find something, we gotta do something with you. 
So now we have this large amount of individuals that can't find anywhere to go because of this crime-free housing. So I would hope the city of Phoenix would work a little bit harder with the homeowners and the apartment managers and property managers, whatever else, to say, hey, you guys need to understand, we have these vouchers available, we're gonna pay your rent you know, for these individuals that are in here, but you, know, you gotta give a little bit of leeway and allow these individuals to move into these places because they do have criminal histories, but that doesn't mean they're gonna go and trash your apartments. That doesn't mean they're gonna bring in drugs to your environment. That doesn't, I mean, all these negative stigmas that we have, I would hope the city would work really hard um, to help individuals like myself and others to fight this stigma. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your advocacy. With that, we are adjourned.